Hi, it's Becky. If you've developed courses in Storyline 2 with quiz questions, you know that learners can click to review when they reach the results slide after they take the quiz. Also, you may have noticed that by default, reviewing means review all the content, not just the quiz slides. Let me quickly move through this little course so we can check that out. So I'm going quickly, as I mentioned. The content here isn't so important. What we want to get to is what happens when we review the quiz. So a couple more content slides here. And this last quiz question. And now I'm going to be at the results slide. So I'm going to click to review. And when I do, initially I arrive at a question. That's what I want to have happen. But when I click Next Now, notice that I'm not at a question, I'm at a content slide. If we look carefully at the menu, we can see why that is. It's because the quiz questions are interspersed with the content. And by default, Storyline interprets Next as meaning Next Slide. But in this situation, we really want to set things up to go to the next question. The method for doing that in Storyline 1 isn't currently working for Storyline 2, so let's see what will work. The first thing we need to do is to create a true-false variable, and you do that over here with the Manage Project Variables button. You can see that I've set mine up already. I've called it Jump to Q. You can call yours whatever you want. The default value is false. There are other variables here as well. Those were set up when we added the results slide, so Storyline set those up automatically. So I'm going to click on OK. We've done our first step, which is to create the true-false variable. The next step is to tell Storyline when to set or adjust the variable, really just when to turn it on. And we want that to happen on the results slide, so I'm going to scoot down to it, when the learner clicks the Review button. So I'm going to click on that Review Quiz button, and I'm going to add a trigger to adjust the variable. What I want to do, the action that I want, is to adjust the variable that's down here in the More section. The variable, remember, is the jump to Q variable. I want to change its value to a value of true. And that needs to happen when the learner clicks the button. You can see here it's the Review Quiz button. So I'll click on OK. We have created the variable. We've adjusted the variable. Now we need to tell Storyline when to use the variable. And we want Storyline to use the variable on the first content slide that follows the quiz slide. Here's question one, and here's the first content slide after question one. What we want to have happen is we're going to add a new trigger to jump to the next question slide. So jump to slide, the next question slide, question two. When the timeline starts on this content slide, but only on condition that that jump to queue variable is equal to a value of true when the timeline starts on this slide. We have that trigger set up. There is another problem, and that is that if we left things as is, the learner would probably see a flicker when that jump to the next quiz slide happens. Fortunately, Justin Grenier, one of the Articulate staff members, came up with a fix for that. What we need to do is to add a new layer, so I'm going to do that here. And then we need to change the properties of that layer. Right here I'm going to click on that little properties gear. What we want to do is we want to hide objects on the base layer. I'll click on OK. And then we do need one more trigger, so I'm going to come back to that base layer. And the other trigger is we want to show that layer, what layer? Well, that untitled layer, when the timeline starts on this content slide, but only on condition that that jump to queue variable is equal to a value of true. And I'll click on OK. Now we did that for the first question slide. We need to do it for any other question slides that have content slides after them. So I will scroll here to question two, and then I need to go to the first content slide after that quiz slide, after that quiz question slide. 
and I need you to do the same thing that I just did. If you hold on for a moment, I'll go ahead and do that. Now that I'm back, I'd like to review that because it can feel a little confusing. There's so much going on there. What we did was we came to the first content slide after the second quiz question and we needed to add a trigger that would jump to the next quiz question. See here it's jumping to question three and the timeline starts on that slide if the jump to Q variable is equal to true. We also had to add a new layer. You can see that I did that here. We needed to change the properties for that layer to hide objects on the base layer. And then we had to come back to the base layer and add another trigger to show the layer when the timeline starts if jump to Q is equal to true. Now the proof's in the pudding. Let's preview this and see if it's doing what it's supposed to do. Here we are at the first content slide. Now we're at a quiz slide. We'll answer the quiz question and submit it. We'll go to the next content slides. There's a couple of them. We'll answer the quiz question again and go to two more content slides and the last quiz question. And let's see what happens when we go to review. I'll click on that review button. We've jumped to the first quiz question, that's great, and to the next quiz question, and to the last quiz question. Remember, this will work no matter how many content slides you have in between the question slides. You simply need to add the triggers and layers on the first content slide that follows each quiz slide in the way I just demonstrated. And if you have any questions, be sure to come on over to the eLearning Heroes community.